Reporting on exciting medical breakthroughs is a role 2020 has carried out for years. And to make sure that we don't give credence to frauds, we rely on ABC News medical editor, Dr. Timothy Johnson. But recently, he came to us with a story that sounds almost like science fiction. It involves the theory that electricity plays a very major role in the human body. It could revolutionize medical science. It might even provide a new way of treating cancer. It has long been known that electrical impulses are essential to the functioning of the brain and nervous system. But what if the electrical forces in the body are more extensive than that? What if all our tissues are part of a vast, previously unknown electrical system? So this is a, a new circulatory system, which is so uh, difficult for many to understand, because they say, why haven't we discovered, uh, we found that before? In recent years, Dr. Nordenstrom has become used to the skepticism of his scientific colleagues. However, he came to his electrical research with a record of accomplishments which are impressive. Dr. Nordenstrom is recognized as a brilliant pioneer in his field, diagnostic radiology. For example, in the 1950s, he developed fine needle biopsies to diagnose lung cancer. At the time, it was considered a revolutionary idea, but today it is used routinely throughout the world. He also pioneered in the 50s the techniques that led to the first x-ray pictures of the insides of blood vessels in the lungs. In the 60s, he was named chief of diagnostic radiology here at the world-renowned Karolinska Hospital. And three years ago, he served as chairman of the assembly that chooses the Nobel Prize winners in medicine. Dr. John Austin, a radiologist at Columbia in New York, says Dr. Nordenstrom's credentials are rock solid. Oh, yes. He says has not just impeccable credentials, but really extraordinary credentials. Without his past reputation, Dr. Nordenstrom probably would not have been allowed to take his theory about electrical forces in the body and apply it to the treatment of cancer. As it was, his colleagues sent him only patients who had failed other treatment. In his first series of 20 patients with lung cancers, Dr. Nordenstrom's treatment produced a nearly 50% response for what Dr. Nordenstrom describes as otherwise incurable cases. To understand Dr. Nordenstrom's theory in cancer treatment, it helps to understand his overall theory. Dr. Nordenstrom believes that the body is filled with electric circuits and that current travels through vessels and tissues just like they were electrical cables. The current can travel long distances through blood vessels or short distances through the walls of the capillaries into and out of surrounding tissues. When Dr. Nordenstrom places electrodes inside and outside the tumors and runs a charge between them, he believes he can manipulate these electrical forces to kill the tumor. In 1979, one year after Dr. Nordenstrom started his electrical treatment of patients with lung cancer, he launched a project that would distance him from much of the scientific community. Instead of submitting his theory and treatment results to scientific journals, he began writing a textbook to explain it. I have written this book on biologically closed electric circuits. Dr. Nordenstrom bases his lectures, like this one at Boston's Beth Israel Hospital, on his book, which was completed in 1983. His decision to publish a book rather than a series of scientific papers meant that most of his colleagues would not take the time to review or criticize his work. However, Dr. Austin, who edited the book, defends Nordenstrom's approach. Well, this is... This is big stuff, and his answer is that the standard, and I think his answer is right, that the standard way that people do science and medicine is in small, discrete articles, five or ten pages to an article with very tight reasoning, uh, and that his theory is much too big, uh, that the right way to get it out is to put it out uh, as a whole. And I accept that argument. However, this approach means that Dr. Nordenstrom has trouble selling his theories to the scientific community. During a recent series of lectures in the U.S. this summer, he spoke mainly to small groups of radiologists, many of whom had never read his book or didn't understand his theories. Dr. Morton Glickman, a radiologist from Yale, did read the book because he was asked to write a scientific review of it. It took him a year to finish. And I really looked for holes in this because it was so off the wall. And I couldn't find any holes. Uh, by the end of the book, I was persuaded. I started skeptical like everybody else does. But it, it just was, was very careful, very thorough, complete, and uh, eminently persuasive. In addition, several doctors in Italy have tried Dr. Nordenstrom's techniques on cancer patients. 
For the past year and a half, Dr. Giuseppe Gasso, an oncologist in private practice in Catania, has treated 30 patients with cancers of the lung, breast, mouth, and neck glands. We can say that this is a therapy that we have definitely found extremely satisfactory, and we are more and more amazed at the results we obtain. This is far from saying that this constitutes a miraculous therapy. We have to wait. We must be cautious and carefully evaluate the results. Outside of these small preliminary trials in Italy, Dr. Nordenstrom's technique still remains virtually unknown to the scientific world. And so, Dr. Nordenstrom has decided to turn to China. Doctors in Beijing have invited him to set up shop in China where patients who would otherwise get no treatment will at least get some treatment, albeit experimental. And they want me to train Chinese people to do the treatment because they have four million cancer cases and they cannot take care of everything. The results of those studies could be significant. But for now, Dr. Nordenstrom remains a giant scientific question mark. And we are left only to speculate. If he's wrong, he at least will have stimulated scientists to look anew at electricity and biological systems. And if he's right, that electricity circulates in the body in the ways he talks about, then I think there's just no question that this is going to be one of the major discoveries of the entire century. <laughs>